Honorable Minister, you thought I didn't understand what you said. Uh, but I heard Akwenami at the end. So I knew it was time to clap. Uh, let me also speak the little area I know. Novi Loloto Miawezo. Honorable Regional Minister, Minister responsible for finance, Minister responsible for railway development, my brother, the Chief Executive of the National Youth Authority, uh, Togbio, Mamao, leadership of various identifiable groups in the region. Good afternoon to you all. Let me thank you for your attendance and your participation in this town hall meeting on the Ghanaian economy, which is taking place in the Volta region. This is about the fifth region that the government delegation is visited. And the purpose of this town hall meeting is to provide us the opportunity to have a conversation, an honest conversation among ourselves as citizens of this great country called the Republic of Ghana. Uh, because we don't have screens here today, um, part of my presentation, which contains videos and photos, etc., will only be visible to those who are watching on television. But I'll try as much as possible to paint a very simple picture uh, for you as we go along before I invite my other colleagues to speak to us. We are here today, as I mentioned, to extend the ongoing national conversation on the Ghanaian economy to the Volta region. We're a country in which on a regular basis we talk about a lot of things. So sometimes you hear a lot of our national attention is engaged on one allegation. Somebody has, it is alleged that X or Y or Z has happened or that some particular musician has done this or that Dampare has arrested this one. We spend a lot of time discussing many other things in this country but one of the most important subjects that we should be spending a lot of time discussing, it is my respectfully humble view that we don't spend enough time talking about it, and that is the Ghanaian economy. Why is the discussion about the economy important? The economy is important because at the end of the day, no matter who you are and no matter what you are seeking to do, you want to grow at your own micro level, or at the community level, the household level, the community level, the regional level, or the national level. We want to grow. We want to grow, not just growing per se, but we want to have growth that has jobs in it. As we raise our children from home and as they cross the adolescent ages, the next thing we are all thinking about is that when they are done with school, they must get what? A job. So we want to grow, we want to create jobs, we don't just want to create jobs. We want to create jobs that provide satisfactory incomes for people. Kudi, a bit of it. And then as we get some more incomes as individuals, as households, as communities, as a region, as a country, we can work towards improving our quality of life. I believe that these are some of the conversations that are most important that we should be having as a republic. In the last five years or so, the Akufuado administration has been doing a lot of work as part of its contribution to this exercise of growth, jobs, incomes, and quality of lives. I heard the regional minister speaking about infrastructure here in the region. Roads, railways, I've seen the railways extending to the region. The railway uh, development minister is here. He will speak for himself. Jobs, scores of jobs in the public sector. And as the private sector is growing, what it means is that there's an expansion for private sector job growth as well. We have also seen, I'm sure you will attest to the fact that we have seen investment in security. These days, with all the dangers in the West Africa sub-region, in the Sahelian areas uh, of extremism, people attacking one another, it's been very important for government to invest in security. So you've seen a lot of investment in security in terms of personnel and logistics, military, police, other services. We have seen investment in health care. And then we've also seen expansion of social protection programs. The Livelihood, ex, uh, um, um, the LEAP program, the Free Senior High School program, the School Feeding program. We are seeing expansion in all of these social protection programs. But we also agree that in 2020, something extraordinary hit the entire world. 
Tobuyo, Mamao, today as we sit here, we are all wearing masks. That is even a signal that we are still not in ordinary times. Something extraordinary has happened. And this disease called COVID-19, that took all over, took many countries by storm, killed hundreds of thousands of people who have been contending with it. As we contend with COVID-19, social distancing, people should uh, not go to work or should go through lockdowns, etc. The impact is that the growth that we are looking for begins to slow down. The jobs that we are looking for to increase begins to slow down. The incomes that we are expecting an increase in begin to slow down. And the expansion in the quality of life that we are looking for begins to slow down. Today, growth that slowed down in many parts of the world. Thankfully, in Ghana, growth is beginning to pick up again. And that's why, as the minister will explain later, there's evidence that we are building forward better. We are gradually recovering from this challenge. But there's still increased hardship globally, not just because of COVID, but as I'm sure you have been seeing on your television, there's a major war that is broken out in parts of Europe. And already you are beginning to see fuel prices going up or crude oil prices going up, what it means is that fuel prices here in Ghana are also going to escalate. What it means is that inflation that is going up around the world will also affect us down here. What it means is that somewhere down the line, interest rates are also going to be going up because of these challenges that we are having all over the world. So it brings into focus the more the need to have this conversation about the Ghanaian economy. What can we do to build forward better? Already we've started some recovery from COVID, but there's a second wave of challenges that appear to be coming because of what's happening around Russia, Ukraine, and all of those places. So what can we do together to build forward better? President Akufo-Addo believes that his government should engage with the people of Ghana and explain what we are doing, and also take your feedback and your guidance on what we can all do together. What is government's program for recovery? What is our individual and collective responsibility if we are to help government succeed at this program? I know sometimes some of the economists like to call it burden sharing. I like to call it responsibility sharing. What is our shared responsibility in this recovery that we are seeking to occasion? Honorable Minister, as we are driving here, we passed by a vehicle, and I noticed the driver in the vehicle uh, signaling to us that, look at the road, look at the road that you are driving on. I said, it's true. That road is not good enough. But what is our collective responsibility in fixing it? What is the contractor's responsibility? What is the responsibility of the engineers from uh, um, the highways and the urban roads? What is the responsibility of the government? And respectfully, what is our responsibility as citizens if that road that we are pointing to is going to be fixed? That's a conversation we are here to have today. We are happy that you, our key stakeholders, are here. We look forward to your feedback and your interactions. And as I say, Akpena mi kaka kaka and take my seat. I want to invite the Honorable Pius Enam Hajide uh, to take the podium and start off the conversation with us. Majority of Ghanaians are youth, are young people. What are we doing for young people? And what is our responsibility in helping government do more for young people? Honorable Pius Enam Hajide, let's welcome him to the podium with a round of applause.